In this video, we illustrate how to perform the augmented Dickey Fuller test for a unit root in Oxmetrics. We use an example based on variable C, which is the log of Danish private consumption. We have time series covering the period from 71 first quarter all the way to 2005 second quarter. We have DC, which is the first difference of C. First, let's look at plot of these two series. We add from the database here C and DC and we do a plot of them separately. Looking at the series up here, it's quite easy to see that there is upward trend in C over this period. So we can add a regression line, a trend line, simply by double clicking the graph, then select regression, set the number of lines to one, and then we just make it a little bit fatter. We choose black color, and we make it solid like this. Then we click OK, and here we get a trend line. So this is the graph that is shown on slide 28 in the slides on unit root testing. And what we will do next is reproduce the augmented Dickey Fuller tests that are ported on slide 30. So let's first estimate an AR3 model. We do that here, we go to model, we select the module PCGIF, models for time series data, single equation dynamic modeling using PCGIF. We click formulate, and then we add first we add C, and then automatically we get a constant included in the model. We also add a trend, and then we start by adding three lags of C. So this is an AR3 model with a constant and a trend. We click OK, we select OLS, and note that the sample here starts in 71 fourth quarter. That means that we are conditioning on the first three observations, and then we end the estimation at the final observation in the sample. We click OK, and here we get the estimated model. We're going to work with the error correction representation. So that's a model for the first difference, where we include not three lagged first differences, two lagged first differences, and then the lagged level. We go back to model. We click model here, formulate, and then we clear the model here. First add DC. We have a constant. We also add a trend. Then we want two lags of DC, and then we want one lag of the level. So, like this. So we click OK, choose OLS again, and we make sure that the estimation sample is the same as before. We click OK, and we compare the two models that we got. So note here that the log likelihood in these two models, 356.71, in the first model, the AR3 model up here, that's exactly the same we get down here. So this is the same model, but a different representation. And we can derive the estimated parameters in one of those simply from the other one. Now, let's look at the misspecification test down here. So first we note that there's no problem with autocorrelation, no problem with arch. Normality of the estimated residuals, however, is rejected. And finally, no problems with heteroscedasticity. In particular, we want to pay attention to the test for no autocorrelation, and in this case, we don't have autocorrelation in the estimated residuals. So we have a model that is pretty well specified, and we can continue doing inference in the model. The first thing we want to do is figure out how many lags we need. So we will look at, this is our coefficient, which we call C2. This is the coefficient to the first difference at T minus two. And note that because this, even if the variable C is an I1 process, a unit root process, then this is a coefficient to a stationary variable. So this t value here we can look at and it's under the null that the coefficient is zero. That t value follows a standard normal distribution. So here we get a t value of one which indicates that this coefficient is in fact insignificant. So we will try to get rid of that. Let's try to impose the restriction that that coefficient is in fact equal to zero. We go back to the formulate window and we simply exclude DC minus two. We re-estimate the model like this. Note that I don't change the sample because we want the model that we now estimate to be nested in the model we had before. This is what we get here. And just note that the likelihood we got from before, 556.7, it's almost unchanged. But look at the T value here. This is the coefficient to the first lag of consumption and that appears to be significant. So we cannot impose further restrictions. Finally, we note that 
still have no problems with autocorrelation, which is the most important part here. Now we have an estimation sample that starts in the fourth quarter in 71, and we could actually extend the sample so that we included one more observations, which is what we'd have done in the lecture slides. So I'm also going to do that here, just to make sure that we get something that is similar to what we saw in the lecture. So we go back to the formulate window, we click OK, same model, same estimator, but now note that we have one more observation that we can include in the estimation, and we will do that. So this is exactly the model that is represented on slide 30. Note that if we compare to before, it seems that we get almost identical results. So this is the model that we want to use to do the augmented Dickey Fuller test. And remember that the augmented Dickey Fuller test is simply a test that the coefficient pi is equal to zero. So that means that the coefficient to the lag level here, this is the coefficient pi, that that is equal to zero. We can compute the test statistics, the Dickey Fuller t test, that pi is equal to zero. That is simply given by the t value that we have here. So the, the test statistics is minus. 2.56. But just note that the asymptotic distribution under the null is not the standard normal distribution. Instead, it's a Dickey-Fuller distribution. And in this case, we get a 5% critical value in the Dickey-Fuller distribution with a constant and trend, and that could equal to minus 3.41. So this implies that we cannot reject the null of a unit root. But just note that what are we actually testing here? Because we have a constant and a trend. So when we impose the unit root, both the constant and the trend will be accumulated. So actually, the null hypothesis here is a unit root process with a drift. Drift comes from the accumulated constant terms and a quadratic trend. And that's because the trend term we have up here is also being accumulated. And the alternative that we test against is trend stationarity. A potential problem here is that under the null of a unit root, we have both a drift term and a quadratic trend. And if we go back to the data plot, it's quite obvious that we need the linear trend here, but not the quadratic trend. So we could do a joint test where we impose not only under the null that pi is equal to zero, but also that the trend term is equal to zero. And that we can do by doing a likelihood ratio test and all we have to remember is that the asymptotic distribution under the null is not the usual chi-square distribution, but it's a square Dickey Fuller distribution. So in order to compute the likelihood ratio test, we have to estimate the model under the null, which we can quite easily do. We go back to model, model, we formulate the model, and now we impose the restriction. So that means that we set pi equal to zero simply by removing the lag level. And then we do the same with the trend. So we remove these two, and now we have a model where all that is left is the constant and the first difference with the lag. We click OK, estimate by OLS, set the same estimation sample as before, and then we get the following. Note that the likelihood ratio test that pi equal to gamma, where gamma is the coefficient to the trend, is equal to zero. That's our null hypothesis. And the likelihood ratio test is given by minus 2 times the difference in the log likelihood under the null minus the log likelihood under the alternative. So this is minus 2, and then we can simply plot in. Here we have the likelihood under the null, and then we subtract the value of the log likelihood under the alternative from before. So we get test statistics of 6.73. Remember that the the distribution of the likelihood ratio test under the null is a square Dickey Fuller distribution. It has a 5% critical value with a constant trend of 12.39. So the tables are in the slides and in the lecture note, you can simply look them up. So we cannot reject the null of a unit root process with a drift against the alternative of trend stationarity. So here we get the same conclusion from the two tests. The latter is the more natural comparison we test for a unit root with a drift against trend stationarity. So this is how to do the augmented Dickey Fuller test manually in Oxmetrics. Thanks for watching.